They say, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, because persistence can sometimes pay off big time. Here to talk about some wildly successful people who went from rejection to riches is financial expert Farnoosh Tarabi. So we're going to start off talking about the founder of Spex, Sarah Blakely, who Forbes named the youngest self-made female billionaire back in 2012. But before that, Rejection really seemed to be her middle name, so oh what happened? Oh my gosh, Sarah Blakely, her father always told her, Jesse, you know, rejection is just par for the course, and she experienced a fair dose of it. You know, she tried to become a lawyer, bombed the LSATs. She tried to get a job at Disney World to play Goofy. They were like, no, Sarah, you're too short. Um, yeah, so on and on and on, and then really she would write in her journal, like, I just want to make a product that's going to make people feel better about themselves, and it wasn't until she chopped the feet off of some control top pantyhose that that was when the idea for, for Spanx was hatched and Neiman Marcus became one of her first retailers. So that was a big break. She's probably the one person <laughs> most happy she never got the goofy role in the history of right. mankind turned out okay. What does she say is the secret to her success? Well, we should also mention that Oprah loves Spanx and called Spanx one of her favorite things just two years out. And so that was a big turning point for her. But for Sarah, it really is about mindset because she's like, look, I have no formal training. I didn't go to business school. I got rejected a ton of times. I just stuck with it and I wasn't afraid of rejection. I'm glad you brought up Oprah because she might be one of the greatest examples of going from rejection to riches. Tell us about her story. So we know, Oprah always wanted to work on television and she's great on television, but one of her first jobs, uh, she got fired at, at as a co-anchor for the Baltimore news program, a six o'clock news show. And the station manager was basically like, you know what, Oprah, you're a little too emotionally invested <laughs> in these stories, so you gotta go. That was probably the biggest mistake the Baltimore <laughs> news program ever made. Right? They might not even be around anymore after that mistake. Um, how did she handle the rejection, though? What did she say and what did she credit for her success? I mean, she handled it like a boss. She was like, look, that was a moment for me where Look, I, I didn't, I wasn't skilled, I, I wasn't, um, I was naive, and she really felt like she became a grown woman at that point. She has talked at um, college ceremonies about how, you know, she really uh, is successful because she's full of herself in a good way. She is very self-reflective. She kind of knows her, her flaws and her, her strengths. And she also believes you have to have a spiritual practice. I mean, how could she not say that? She's Oprah. I wonder if Oprah likes coffee. I know I do. Do you like coffee? I've had my third cup today. Okay, so then we all know about <laughs> Starbucks then. I'm a big fan myself. Longtime CEO and now Chairman Howard Schultz. He's worth about oh, three billion dollars. Yeah. But it wasn't an easy road to lattes and frappuccinos. It wasn't. You know, Howard grew up very poor in Brooklyn, and he always wanted to make something of himself. He watched his father work a very tireless job. He was a, delivering diapers and picking up diapers uh, via trucks, and just never really saw his dad be happy or fulfilled. So he's like, you know what? I don't want to continue this life for myself. He went on to college, got a great job in sales and marketing, actually worked for Starbucks in the very early days really? of Starbucks and on, was on a business trip to Italy where he saw kind of the Italian coffee experience with the frappuccinos and all of that good stuff. He wanted to bring that back to Starbucks and they said, no thank you, Howard. Wow. So he left, started his own coffee making company, bought Starbucks wow. for $3.8 million when there were just six stores. Uh. And fast forward to today, of course, we know how history played out. I was gonna say, He's a billionaire, they're in over 70 countries. That's unbelievable. You go to Italy, it is a religion over there, the way they pull their espresso. Now, Starbucks is like part of our fabric here in the United States. What does he attribute? To his tremendous well, success. I think it was a lot of his father's story that drove him. You know, he didn't want to repeat his father's lack of fulfillment in his career. Um, Howard Schultz is also very devoted to his employees. He calls mm. them partners. And I think that he it's no coincidence that every single employee, whether they're full time or part time, has health insurance there because his dad didn't have it. Mm. He did get injured on the job and it really ruined his family's finances. So he's very devoted to not repeating his past. Okay, so the head of Starbucks is worth about three billion. Thank you so much for being here.